Welcome back to V Kind Vibes. I'm your host, Gia, and we're here in Las Vegas, Nevada, on the set of Peel, the first vegan cooking competition. I don't know about you, but I want to see what's cooking in the kitchen. Let's go. Welcome to our home set. Yes, this is Peel. So let's take a look at what's going on, okay? So we have the challenge that's coming up. Aren't these beautiful? These mushrooms. Our set design. We got all the spices here. And then come take a look at our fridge. We have our melt butter. Our premier sponsor for the show. Lots and tons of ingredients fresh produce. So, this is Chef Josie. Hi! Personally, I think that my palate is a little bit more refined in the sense of I crave more sophisticated artistic flavors. So sear this beef nice and I want to kind of do like a meat and, meat and potatoes. Okay. Like for hungry guys, you know? I'm from Michigan, yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally understand yeah, that. Yeah. I mean, I potatoes got a big three times a, times a week. That's gonna fill you up, you know? And comfort food is a little bit old and played out to me, but I know that it's widely accepted by the masses, so there's always a place for it, just personally not for me. I love for the vegetable flavors to be enhanced rather than coated and covered or heavily seasoned. The more simple and well executed, the better. We're doing a little bit behind the scenes. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what it means to be on set of the first ever vegan cooking competition? Oh man, yeah. I mean, I open restaurants around the world and I open other people's restaurants. I'll open my own restaurant soon in London. I do a lot of nurturing in this industry, helping the infrastructure grow. Um, into something sustainable, not only for the emotions of all the workers in the hospitality industry, but also for our earth, most importantly. And yeah, being on this show is the catalyst for that to happen even more, so. We appreciate you being here and making it happen because without somebody like her, it would never be possible. All these chefs are so talented. I know that your work and what you're able to play is normally really beautiful and time just got the best of you last challenge. Heck so yeah. take deep breaths and get through it and make sure what you bring to us is spectacular. How are you doing? I'm good, how are you? Good, so just wanted to see, what is it like being on set? the first ever vegan cooking competition. Actually, it's really fun because when you're on set of other cooking shows that aren't vegan, it's constantly worrisome about what you can eat, um, if they're gonna have enough food for you to eat, or if you're just gonna kinda go hungry. But also, everybody here is so compassionate, right? Like, yes. we're all kind of in this for the same reason, and we're all working for the betterment of the food industry. Yes. So we're all sharing the same goal, and I think that's what's the most fun. If you have real props, you're doing things with vegetables because meat is just heated up and move on. Maybe there's salt and pepper involved. Yeah. That's when all that choice comes in and you really have to know what you're doing. All the vegetables are different and they need different things. So when most people think about plant-based food, they think about a plant-based burger. And then they think like, eh, does it match up for me or not? And that's the limit of what they think plant-based food can be. So first of all, I'm happy to leave the fast food world. But more than that, I'm happy to show people the depth and the breadth of what is possible. Often I get the question of like, oh my gosh, well if you're vegan, what do you eat? As if I have fewer choices. And the truth is, once I opened my world to vegetables, I had more choices. I think what's most important to me is this shines a light on the depth and breadth of vegetables and what vegetables in the right hands are capable of. And I hope that everyone who watches the show isn't intimidated, but rather gets some tips for what they can do at home. Maybe they're gonna go out and they're gonna say, hey, I'm gonna get mushrooms and it's not gonna be Baby Bella. I'm gonna take it to the next level. If food doesn't taste great, it's not the food's fault. So people should never say vegan food doesn't taste great oh, because that. then they're saying the chef can't cook. Mm. <laughs> and so you should never hear a chef say that vegan food isn't delicious. Dr. Miles. Yeah, so it's just super exciting. Uh, it's, there's professionalism out of all the chefs and the production and everything's just really done well. I think so. And so it's been amazing to watch people give everything in, um, and, and try to put their best plates forward. Because this isn't 
about the best vegan chefs, it's about the best chefs because there shouldn't be a differentiation between vegan chef and chef. If you can't make a food taste good, you, you can't be calling yourself a chef. I really like the passion that went into a lot of those foods, but I didn't necessarily like all of those foods. I liked that they were able to come together at the end and, and really put those foods together, but some of the things were um, a little bit hard to eat. <laughs> a mint of zucchini blossom. Are you for real? Are you for real right now? Are you okay? Hmm. I think what threw me is because he did pair the strawberries with it, I was expecting something sweet. I got something savory. I see. With a sweet berry. Uh, they, um, they just weren't tasting the food or uh, they hadn't really thought through how they were gonna put it together on a plate. How's it going in here? It's going great. Oh, Chef Nicole was just telling me a little bit about her inspiration to find the oneness. Oh, in I cuisine. Love I love that. This is amazing. And what I like more than anything is the love that is distributed on this set. If I was on a set and it was a bunch of bitches on this set, I wouldn't <laughs> want to be here. But everybody on this set, the, from the camera people, the guy that mics me, everybody. I laugh and tell jokes with everybody here. You yeah. can't beat that. You cannot beat that. Um, after the very first episode, I was kind of like, Ooh, what's going to happen? Is this going to work out? Is it going to do what we need it to do? And it all came together. Um, it just seems like everybody brought their A-game, brought their energy, and um, pulled it off. They were, they were not going down in defeat. And so, um, being a part of that, this entire experience, has just been really, really uplifting and enlightening, to say the least. The love in this room was unbelievable. I can't even imagine being on a, a, a TV set. Do you have what it takes, or are you going to get peeled into the cup? Which one? I love it. I'm just here. No. They do my job for me. No. She does the best job, and we already know this because we've seen her in action before. It was interesting to see professionals fumble at their craft when put to the test. And I think with my background as a professor, I can really see that translate to this field where sometimes people just don't do well under pressure. They don't test well. Um, and that we got to see in every single episode. If I was working in this environment, it would drive me a little bit bonkers right now because everybody looks a little bit disorganized. It was when they said 10 minutes that I realized I'm not going to put anything edible on these plates. And I just need to accept that now. Food, cooking, and veganism, I think is so important to me because it was the first safe space that I ever knew. I'm transgender and growing up in the deep South, I was relentlessly bullied and tormented and cooking in the kitchen with my family was, they were some of the only happy memories that I could connect with for a really long time. I literally have been training my whole life to dig up in a basket or a pantry, I don't know, of random ingredients and make something bomb. I love what I see Nicole doing. Instead of just putting the honey on the board, she's actually putting it with the mango and making some sort of sauce out of it, um, which is really nice. When I found out that I was gonna be a part of this all vegan cooking competition show, I was over the moon. Just to finally see the culinary arts get to this place and have an opportunity. There's so many times that I've been in castings and auditions and everybody was green lighting me and I was a yes until they found out that I would absolutely only prepare vegan food. And I was passed up for people that were less qualified and less experienced and it's just heartbreaking. As a chef, I trained myself a lot by trial and error finding a new love for produce, understanding taste, and stripping things back to what they were originally and understanding how to transform traditional European flavor into vegan flavors. Well, we were definitely impressed with 
what you brought to us last time. Thank you. So we really want you to bring it this time with presentation. Oh wow, pressure, okay. pressure. Okay. I'm a fast thinker. I think on my feet. I'm a big creator in many outlets in my life, including cooking. And my approach is unique. My so I just went over and visited Chef Donald Station, and he said that he had to dump his potatoes. So he's restarting on one filling, I believe. Okay. Or maybe he's just innovating. I grew up in the restaurant business, and it was really fabulous because uh, my father taught us a really good work ethic. Me and my brothers were working all the time there, so he was kind of like a taskmaster. I became a vegan chef because of my grandma, Martha Ann. Uh, she actually developed cancer when I was in high school and she was my favorite person ever to walk this planet. And I started researching ways to help her in her recovery. And one study led to another study. And before you knew it, we were far down this vegan rabbit hole. And I actually made the switch for myself because I thought if we could eat this way to heal cancer, we could also eat this way to prevent it. I was diagnosed about 20 years ago with uh, multiple myeloma. It was a shock to, to my system, a shock to my family. I'm not saying that being vegan is gonna cure cancer or nothing, but uh, it's, it's kind of helped me and it's one of the greatest decisions I made in my life. the end of um, filming and it just kind of feels surreal you know this thing has been in the works for so long now and to be here at the end with everything in the can and ready to go it just it just feels like we can all breathe a little bit knowing what magic we have just captured I feel complete knowing that I've left the chefs with a lot to mull over for the rest of their career I feel like this show not only gave them confidence, but exposed their brand. I assisted them in going forward in this competition and not losing hope, if you will. So yeah, I think that my, my role as a host was the best. You know, we started with the first challenge and I thought, this is gonna go really poorly. And here we are trying to show the world all the things that vegans can create. Peeled was a very, very, very exciting show. Um, it was an opportunity to meet a lot of like-minded people who are passionate about a cause to expand the vegan movement, the plant-based movement. show without all these talented people that are on set so like I said you have to tune in check out what's going on but we are so blessed to bring this to you from Be Kind Vibes I'm Gia